Okay, here, so here we are at Harry Potter Wood. There is Watford Junction Station. You cross the road and you come to collect any minute now as the bus comes around. The bus, which will take you directly to the studio. Okay, so it's three pounds. It's currently three pounds to get a return to the studio. There it is. That's the bus you're looking for. You can see it says at the front, or did say at the front. They are Watford Harry Potter Studios. We're on our way to the studio. So we're on our way, we're, we're actually on the bus. And as Mark said before, it's three pounds return. You just pay your, it's all card, so you can't uh, pay by cash. So you have to have your card with you, tap your card, as you know, and then it's three pounds per ticket, and that should be returned as well. Can't wait, I'm getting excited. And just a quick look, they are doing social distancing, so there's seats in front, and behind you're not allowed to sit in so you are social distance yeah, here yeah yeah which is really good hello and welcome to mark and kelly's chips tips and things i'm so excited guess where we are Ta -da! we are at warner brothers studio the making of harry potter now i've got my mask do you recognize it i'm putting it on let's go in okay so we're in we've just come through checking they check your bags and all of that type of stuff Outside, um, you can either download your uh, tickets or you can get uh, physical tickets. And I wanted to get physical tickets because I wanted to keep them as a souvenir. So there's our tickets. And I also bought online a souvenir uh, paperback souvenir guide and a digital guide. So I'm going to pick up the digital guide here and then Mark will be able to use it. Also, when you pick up your little tickets, you can also get a little passport. And then around the sort of area, you can just get stamps. Uh, it's like um, an impression. So they have these impression stamps that are all dotted around the place. And you're just going to get your impression stamp. We'll show you as we're going along. And here we are. Kelly's just picking up her digital guide from the area here. I love all the little decor they've got here. You can see all the letters being collected by Owl Post. But here's Kelly picking up her digital guide. So here we are, we're entering the main hall before we enter into Harry Potter World. And look at the dragon. That is huge. It's so good. So you can see around here, they've got all different characters. As you can see, but I love that dragon. This hallway is huge. Now this is the main waiting area before you actually go into Harry Potter world. Um, we've been here before and it's been absolutely rammed. So you can have a coffee if you want to wait. There's a little relaxing area. There's the main shop. Now, when you leave, you'll come out into the main shop. Uh, and over the course, you've got another area there with the hot chocolates, ice creams, tour entrance. They do have costumes here as you can see from Fantastic Beasts. So I'm just going to show you. There's Newts, Albus Dumbledore there, we've got uh, Jacob Kowalski, Queenies, Tina Goldstein, Gellert and Credence at the end there. But there you go. So the main hallway, there's Kelly's looking around. What do you think? I love the main hall of this. I like the grandioseness of it. I like the fact that you can get a drink over there if you want to, if you're right, and your time, your only from your time slot or anything like that, you can go and sit down and get a drink. I wanted to quickly talk. So we've got a digital guide, and they wipe everything down, so everything's clean, everything's wiped down. You don't use it for the first 20 minutes because it's a guided tour, and you can just hit the play button, and it explains how to use the device. You get um, the device and you get the little headset as well. Now this, I will have to double check and I'll put it in the corner of the price that I paid in order to get the digital device and the paperback souvenir uh, guide. Um, so yeah, that will be there. But yeah, that's how to use it. So I'm excited. Family that don't treat Harry very nicely. And there's his cupboard under the stairs where they kept him. So we've just come into the main, this is the very, very beginning of the whole process. We've just come through, there's his cupboard under the stairs. And we're just working our way round. So here we are, we're coming through. This is coming into the main entrance now. As you walk into the entrance, we're getting excited into the guided tour. Give the floor a nice stomp for me, please. 
That is actually real York flagstone, just as you'd find in any of the castles in the UK. The filmmakers realised that this floor would endure loads and loads of wear and tear, and using real stone was the one and only way to make it last, and it survived some of the biggest scenes, including the sorrows that Daniel Radcliffe wore as Harry Potter when he was only 11 years old. We got this wonderful little wizard, tie and teeny tiny. Harry was played by Robin Portrait. He's a tall man standing at six foot two, but just not quite tall enough to play the half giant. So that specific costume actually never belonged to Robin Portrait. It belonged to Martin Bayfield. He sized up for a lunch and enjoyed the celebration of slithering. Have fun. So here we are in the Great Hall and we've come during the Slytherin celebration. Mark is filming on the other camera while I am filming on my phone. Now these are the tables of the various houses but as you can see they only have two tables set up but as uh, the tour guide was saying, you can see that the, the, there is no roof or no ceiling, should I say. And that's because during filming, they could change it to be the, the, they could change the ceiling to mirror the outside weather. But look how amazing, look at the doors there, amazing. So here we are in the Great Hall. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. So they're celebrating Slytherin, Slytherin Day or week. And uh, these are all replica foods that they've actually created. So all from uh, plastic. And you can look at all resin. There's a the great fire look and look at that. That's so, so good. They've got some of the actual original costumes in here as well. Um, as you can see here, as I look through, They've got the different houses there, so they're slithering. They've also got round their Ravenclaw. Here you've got Hufflepuff, I believe. Yeah, that's the Hufflepuff one. And then right at the end is, is um, Gryffindor. Why well, is there something else saying Gryffindor? And apparently, the guide was just saying that that was the original costume Harry Potter wore. Well, Daniel Radcliffe wore, I should say, when he was playing Harry Potter. There we are. So that was the very first costume he wore. There you go. Look at that. So we're just now going out of the Great Hall. I am going to just take you to the end here as well, because something else I wanted to show you was actually Hagrid's costume. So if you have a look here, you can see here. So apparently Hagrid's body double was actually six foot ten and he wore that costume even then they had to pad it out um, and they had to add an animatronic head so it looked like Robbie Coltrane who was the actor playing the role but that is so good there you go the great hall what do you think I, I think it's amazing I love the doors just at the oh end yeah the doors so at the end in, it's so grandiose it's grandiose you can see all of the hall and of course the uh, houses, the tables for the houses, except they're sitting two, not four, which as you know, there are four houses. Um, but they've set it up as two and done the replica food, which I'm sure Mark has spoken about. But yeah. So here's the key sculpture here. Now, what was interesting is this is actually apparently based upon the design of uh, the pavilion in Brighton. Now, I originally thought it was based upon um, St. Peter's Square in Russia, but it's not. It's based upon... Uh, the pavilion in Brighton that was really interesting and you can see here all the little crystals and chandeliers that would have been in the main hall there but also as well I love this around here so if I just take you around here around the corner look at that the chocolate actual designs here for the chocolate feast they look edible it looks actually realistic of course all made glue Swiss rolls chocolate phoenix cake which is there um, and it's survived apparently over seven years in storage. Really, really tempting. It's making me hungry. All the way through, you'll have little guides, which will just tell you here about how they constructed the 
various models, the different types of costumes that you have. Really looking forward to going through this as well. They've also got, as they will have, um, videos showing of how costume designs were done. You can see here, look, how they actually did the costume sets and designs. Absolutely fantastic. And what's really good is we come during the week, it is really, really quiet. So you can see here, but this just gives you an idea the actual size and scale of the studio. Look, if I look up, even on the ceiling, on the roof, you can actually see the, the actual set design for the Great Hall. Really good. It's great detail. This cauldron looks ginormous, but even, I love how it looks like a real fire. And if, I don't know if you can hear it, but you can, I can actually hear that it's bubbling away. And then you've got great art on the wall here. So here is the moving staircase and the moving paintings. So if I go around here, look at the artwork. You've got the glare from there, but yeah, the artwork here is amazing and there is a different view of the moving staircase looks amazing and here are the proclamations let me see if I can zoom in I don't know how clear I can get them but there you go Now, if you remember Harry taking a bubble bath, these are all the different scents of bubble bath. Each tap will give you a different bubble bath scent. So here is the Gryffindor dormitory, Harry's dormitory to be precise. just off the Gryffindor common room. I love this. Look how narrow and rickety the corridor is. And this is part of the leaky cauldron. So if I just go over here, and it says this hallway from the wizard pub and in was designed using visual technique called forced perception which makes it appear to be more than 50 feet long on screen forced perception is an ancient artistic technique that uses optical illusion to make an object appear larger smaller further or closer than it actually is so there we go all along, you're given a passport in the beginning when you come in. Make sure you grab one of these. That's right. And at various stages, you have to stamp this. So you'll get this inbox, which is here. And so they've changed it. Used to be you stamped it, but obviously because of COVID times, you don't touch. You put it underneath, and there's a pedal at the base, as you can see. And you stamp on it. Well, I didn't do that very well in the middle, but you can just about see there's the inboss. Oh, yes. So I'll let Kelly do hers. So like Mark, I'm going to get my one stamped. So as he did, I'm just going to pop it under here. It's difficult to hold the book and try and find Yeah, that's what I did. I, I uh, made them. That's it, it. You got it. it. Got it. Stand on it. So this is one thing they have changed before, like I said, you used to have a lever, you used oh, to have to do you know what we didn't see? Actually, it gives you a level to line it up oh, with okay. here. And I have not pushed it No, right I didn't either. So you can learn from our mistakes. Yeah. I took my off, off it, but you can just about make, if I can zoom in there. Yeah, you can just about make the inboss. You got your bang in. Wow. 
So if you look here, this is the mirror of Ariaset, which is actually desire spelt backwards. And this is where Harry comes and sits in front and sees his parents and that he's with his parents. And that was what his deepest desire was, was to be with his parents. If you look over here, this is the entrance into before you get to um, Dumbledore's office. Ah, I remember seeing this actually when we were in Florida. That's right, and it turns. So basically, you step in, it turns, and then lifts you up and takes you to Dumbledore's office. And let's take a look at the office. It's so good. So the actual replica there, as you can just about see, I'm just behind the pillar, so I will move out for a little second. But the detail, you can see all the little potions in here. And if I zoom in here, inside are loads and loads of little potions in this cabinet. Right, let me move around a little bit so you can see and there you go look there's Dumbledore's costume and his office I'll just zoom in so you can see the costume but there you go and his desk what a place to work and you can just about make out the globe at the back there so if you see all these paintings they're all the previous headmasters Oh, okay. These are all previous headmasters? These are all the previous headmasters before Dumbledore. I won't tell you what happens, but something else happens during the films, but I don't want to do any spoilers. But yeah, these are all the previous headmasters. And whenever Dumbledore queries himself or has a thought, he can confer with the previous headmasters because, as you know, they all move and talk. Okay, so if you take a look here, this is the pensieve that um, Harry looks into because the cupboard slightly opens and he goes in, he looks and he falls in. And these are memories, these are what hold your memories. So sometimes when Dumbledore gets lots of memories clogged up, he can just take a memory and pop it in the pensieve and then he can go and look at it at his leisure and see it from different perspectives. And there you go. Well, I hope you know where we are now. We're in the potions a classroom with Slytherin. And so, there is that Slughorn. This is so I'm learning, you see. What I love about this, look at all the various jars and bottles you've got here. If you look at the book here, and I'll zoom in because we're not allowed that close. Well, look, it's actually stirring itself. You can see all those jars and potions. Many, many glass bottles. I do love, I think that is so cool. It's that so cauldron is just stirring itself and the fact that they have different workbenches as well yeah so if you're in a group as you were at school when you took your you know chemistry class or whatever you'd be seated at a bench and it's just like that a replica of sitting at your own bench but this time creating your own potions so here we are at Hagrid's hut this is where the children run down from the castle just to come and visit Hagrid here we are, so Hagrid's hut. The detail in here is fantastic. Look at all the little knick-knacks and bric-a-bracs. His house is pretty cluttered. And actually, in fact, Kelly just pointed this out. We didn't see, there's actually on the side there, they've got the window open, so you can actually look inside there for a better detail. But they've actually gone to so much detail there just to look inside Hagrid's hut. Now, if you watch the film, you can see that Harry and uh, Hermione are outside looking in the window and seeing what's happening um, before, well I won't reveal too much, but in one of the scenes they're actually outside by the uh, pumpkin patch and looking into the window. So here we are at the borough, we've got Evelyn is going to show us a, just some interaction. So. I'm going to do some carrot chopping for you. As you can see over there, there's a knife. So there's a knife and carrot. And, carrot. and over down here, the sensory that helps you chop. So you want to hand over it. Look at that. The carrot. The carrot starts to chop in. It's starting to chop in. That is so, so cool. What does the other one do? The other one's washing the pan. Oh, is it? You can see over there is a pan. Oh, there's a pan. So I can zoom in. So you can see the pan. And down here, once the sensory. There we are, once the sensory hits. Oh, if only all washing up and cooking were that easy. I could just hit the sensory thing. <laughs> Job done. If only, if only that was possible every day. <laughs> so here we go, you can see Magini. Yeah. Now call me morbid, but this is one of my favorite exhibition bits on there. Look at the snake. 
as it crawls or she crawls up there. I just want to get around here so you can see. I just see you and there she is. It's quite realistic actually. You can see there she's ready to strike all the other characters. Watching there, the fireplace is all it's so good and realistic. And as you can see, Lucius and his wife are so scared of Lord Voldemort and this whole scene of what's happening, they're horrified. You can see, you know, she's just here and she's just hanging and they're torturing her and Lucius is so afraid that he could be the next one that's going to be tortured in the same manner. Hang on, I just stop recording, come on. And if you notice just here, her necklace that she's wearing, let me just zoom in. Yeah, let's carry on. Actually, one of the Horcruxes. Ah, there we are. The Horcrux, right there. Here we are at the Death Eaters place, which can mean only one thing. Time for another stamp. Oh, this one's a bit... Ooh. There we go. Can you line it up? I'm going to try. There we there go. We so go. that's what we were saying about lining. Foot on the pedal. And trying to find the pedal. There we are. Good stamp. Well, that's a good stamp. There we go. The Death Eaters, hold on.